Welcome to Washington Hospital Today, dedicated to informing residents about health care topics and issues. Through programs featuring community forums and free health and wellness classes, our goal is to empower community members with the information needed to make informed health decisions. Washington Hospital has been providing health care to the residents of the Washington Township Healthcare District for the past 60 years. Today's presenter is Lori Roffelson. Lori is a clinical registered dietitian. So first we're just gonna talk a little bit, give you some tips about healthy holiday eating and hopefully motivate you to you know, keep on track this, this season with exercise and being mindful of how much we're eating. And then we get to taste a couple of the dishes that we, that we brought in and made for you. And then have a little fun at the back at the end where you have a couple things you can take home and share with your family. So to start, you know, the holidays in the Bay Area, it's not just reserved to Christmas or Thanksgiving. You know, we have so many reasons to celebrate throughout the year and there's so many different holidays. So with every holiday and every culture, there's those special foods that we want to bring out and share and traditional dishes. So we, we don't want to get away from doing that, but at the same time, we want to watch our waist, stay healthy, um, and hopefully not gain weight. So our challenges with the holiday season is, you know, we're going to talk about that today. I'm going to give you some tips and strategies to help keep you on track with healthy eating and prevent holiday weight gain. You know, there's a lot of stress associated with the holiday season. There's time crunch trying to do your normal activities, work, plus shopping, decorating, hosting parties or, or going to parties. And sometimes we also have worries about financial concerns and, and just affording the holidays. And then we also often have less time to do home cooking where we know what's in the recipe and we know it's healthy uh, and finding time to plan those meals. And then on top of that, we have those special celebratory foods that we don't want to, of course, we want to enjoy those at the holiday, right? And, and some of those are high fat or high sugar. So um, how do we fit those in? We have to kind of, you know, give you some ideas. So there's a lot of opportunities for indulgence, and that's where the weight gain risk is. And why, why do we not want to gain weight at the holidays? Well, we know as adults, you know, extra weight is associated with high blood pressure, diabetes risk, and other chronic diseases. So the healthier, you know, we stay as we age, the more active we stay and at, at a healthy weight, the less risk we have for those chronic diseases. So how much weight gain actually happens at the holidays? Well, it used to be, the estimate was more like maybe five or 10 pounds, but there was a study that the National Institute of Health did a few years ago, and they looked at the participants in that study, and the weight gain was actually maybe around a pound to four pounds throughout the holiday season. And they defined the holiday season starting like Thanksgiving through New Year's. So that doesn't seem like a lot of weight, but the problem is if you, even if you gain one pound at, say, the holidays this year, and you don't lose it through spring and summer, and then next year you gain another pound, very soon in, in adulthood you've gained 10 pounds, or you're 10 pounds or 15 pounds heavier than you were maybe in your 20s or 30s. So that's what can kind of, that's where the weight gain can kind of creep up on us. So what do we do to avoid that, even that little bit of weight gain in the holidays? Uh, well, one thing in this study, the participants that were more physically active and exercised had less weight gain. So that's definitely one strategy we're going to talk about. So this calendar is just to give you an example of how, without even really thinking about it too much, just doing those normal activities of the holidays can add up, you know, 150 calories here, 250 calories one day, just by having you know, you go to work and someone's got a box of C's candy out and have one piece there, okay, there's 150 calories. And someone else brings in cookies that they made and there's another 250 calories. 
And if you did that throughout the whole month, you can see by the end, on the 28th day there, you've eaten an extra 14,000 calories, which equates to about four pounds of weight gain. So how do we combat that? Well, the areas I have in red are places where you could throw in some exercise. And it takes a lot of you know, work to, to burn off calories. So for example, if you do low impact aerobics for one hour, you might burn 365 calories. So you have to think about how much you're eating compared to how much you're exercising, because it, does, it, it doesn't add, the exercise may not add up as quickly as, as you hope to. If you're doing brisk walking, if it's very slow walking, you're not gonna burn as many calories, maybe 150. But if you're doing brisk walking outside, maybe you burn closer to 300. And then the duration is important too. If you only walk for 20 minutes compared to 45 minutes, of course you're not gonna burn as many calories. So just kind of be mindful of all the opportunities throughout the month where we're, we're eating or indulging or even just tasting can add up. So here's a one holiday tip for you. Rather than forego enjoying those, those holiday traditions, you know, enjoy making those holiday baked goods that you, that you like to do with your family. But try to give most of it away or find smart substitutions in the recipe to lighten the fat or lighten the sugar content and still, and still retain the, the, the flavor of the, the dish. Uh, here's another tip for you. So if you're at a holiday party or potluck, have a little of everything instead of a lot of everything. So tasting and um, rather than eating a you know, big plate, you know, have a taste of everything that looks really good. And be maybe picky too and, and skip the you know, cheese or skip the things that don't really are, are not that special. So if you're at a holiday party and there's a lot of items to choose from, try to select your favorites to eat. Also look for healthy items on the, the buffet like fruit, vegetables, uh, whole grain crackers, lower fat items, grilled items. If you want to have dessert, try to go for small, modest slices and taste of the desserts. Or use the buddy system and share so you're not eating it by yourself. And another tip if you're having alcoholic beverages, which the calories can add up quickly from those, maybe alternate having an alcoholic beverage and then the next one maybe have a glass of soda water or water to kind of extend out so you're not drinking as much of the, the higher calorie drink. And then if you're going to a, a party or potluck and you're not sure what kind of food is going to be there, you can always bring something that you know is healthy to share and then you know you have at least one healthy dish there for yourself. And I, th I think other people would appreciate that too if you bring something that is a good balance to maybe some of the other heavier holiday foods. So on the subject of alcohol, think before you drink, decide, try to think in advance how much are you going to drink and try to plan and stay within that. Uh, again, start with a non-alcoholic beverage like water maybe to quench your thirst before you start drinking. Try to go for low calorie mixers so, you know, instead of using something that has a lot of syrup in it, like a margarita mix, maybe go for soda water or a low cal other kind of low calorie mixer. And then that will reduce the calorie content of the drink. And, you know, maybe you can, instead of spending a lot of calories on the alcohol, you can have that for a food that you want to eat instead. So I wanted to give you some examples here of how many calories are in some mixed drinks. So who doesn't like eggnog or have eggnog maybe at the holiday season, <laughs> regular eggnog? Okay, so an eggnog, one cup with rum in it is almost 400 calories. That's just a drink and that's not, you know, we haven't even started eating food yet. So you can see, depending on what your choices are, that just calories from beverages can really add up. So some other tips for the holidays. Before you go to a party, if you know you have a party that night, 
So be nice, not naughty before you go. Maybe make sure you're eating healthy all, the, all day long until you go to the party. Maybe make time for exercise that day. Fill up on some fiber before you go, like some vegetables or a salad, so you eat less when you get to the party. And if you get to that buffet, don't park yourself by the buffet table if you know you're going to be tempted to keep eating. So, you know, get some food and then go to another, another part of the party. Another great tip is to use small plates when you are filling up at the buffet. Don't grab a big plate because you probably will take more food than if you take a small cocktail size plate. And again, try to eat the best and leave the rest. And then another tip about eating, you know, try to be mindful, take your time. So also you don't want to arrive at a party overly hungry because you probably will eat fast and you'll eat more than if you have had a little bit to eat before you get there. Take your time. It does take a little time for your stomach to send that signal of, of fullness to your, the brain and then to tell you to stop eating. You could skip the pre-dinner cocktail and drink water. Again, bring a healthy dish to share and try to try to take the focus off food at the party. This is the season of giving, right? So what do we often get as gifts at the holidays? We get food, we get wine, we get gift baskets, we get desserts. That's what people often like to give. So my third tip for you is try to ask for, if someone asks, what do you want for Christmas? Try to ask for non-food related gifts. So things like movie tickets, music, CD, DVDs, gift cards to department stores, maybe something to, to kick start a exercise program, maybe hiking shoes or walking shoes magazine subscription, theater tickets, exercise videos, walking audio CDs, maybe a yoga mat or handheld weights, other things that you would like to, you know, get. So, you know, that's a great way maybe to start off the new year to getting into some exercise. And then tip number four, look for recipe makeovers of your holiday dishes that reduce sugar and reduce fat. So one example is our, which you get to taste in a little bit, is our oatmeal. It's a dark chocolate dried cherry cookie. And it, it has less fat in it, so we reduced about half the fat with applesauce. So that's one of those tips you can do in baking. I didn't replace all the fat, you really can't, you do have, you need some fat in recipes. So there are gonna be some dishes where you can do that and other dishes where you may not be able to figure out how to do it. But look for ways, or look for recipe makeovers when you can. So here's some suggestions. Instead of cream, you could use a cup of evaporated fat-free milk in a recipe. Instead of a cup of butter, you could do half a cup of apple butter or applesauce in place of um, what I did in those cookies, I it called originally for six tablespoons of butter, and I replaced it with just three tablespoons butter and a half cup of applesauce. And they came out really moist. They baked nice. Instead of pastry dough, which is full of shortening or butter, you could use graham cracker crust. And then in in actual cooking, like if you're sauteing, if there's places where you can use less oil in cooking, that will save you some calories. If you can reduce sugar just a little bit in recipes. So if you haven't done it with a recipe, don't, don't try it on, at, on Christmas Eve. You want to try it ahead of time, make sure it works and still tastes good before you give it to your guests. But that's, you know, that's something you can do ahead of time and see. And then you can even you know, tell everyone, oh, I cut the sugar a little bit, or it's a little bit, it's a little bit lighter than the, the original recipe. Uh, so where you can, you can try to use less or just use a substitute. And then always look for heart healthy oils too, instead of using a solid shortening. If the recipe, if it's possible to use maybe a liquid oil, use liquid oil instead. Instead of a recipe that calls for a lot of nuts, say, in the batter, like, say, in a, a cookie, maybe use just a little bit on top. And use small amounts of high-fat ingredients like chopped nuts or cheese or bacon or olives. 
that way you have the flavor of it, but not as much sodium or fat from it. If you've ever tried this, if you make a gravy or a soup, if you refrigerate it and let the fat rise to the top and get hard, you can skim off a lot of that and, and really reduce the fat in the recipe too. If you're making a cake, you could leave it like our pound cake here just has a little sprinkle of powdered sugar. Uh, you can do that instead of frosting. That is going to save you a lot of fat and calories. And then the other thing is just making desserts smaller. So having little mini, we serve these in the hospital. We have these little mini tiramisu cakes, which are very popular. And it's just, a, just enough, of, you know, it's about four bites and it's delicious and it's not as many calories as say a big piece of tiramisu that you might get in a restaurant. So some ideas for lighter recipes like a rib roast, roasted turkey, use lean cuts of meat like pork loin. Uh, you know with classic mashed potato that's where you can definitely try to lighten the fat, use less Maybe if you put sour cream, use a light sour cream, or use less margarine or butter. Roasting vegetables is a great way to add flavor without not too much fat. This graphic is just to show you, again, how the calories can add up through the day if you are having a little bit, let's say you're cooking all day at Christmas time or Christmas Eve. Every little, just remember, every little taste of the cake batter you have or nibble of the sauce you're making or the cheese platter that you're making, all of those calories can add up. So I don't know if the number is kind of small, but if at the end there you've added about 700 calories at the end of the day from all those little nibbles and tastes. So just always keep that in mind too. And that's the, that's the perils of being the cook. You're in the kitchen tasting and, and eating, but try to, try to keep a mindful eye on that. Okay, so just for, for summary, try to plan ahead, implement some you know, good ideas, and especially the exercise part. Be flexible, enjoy the holidays, and keep the reason for the season in your heart and hopefully not on your hips by the end of, the, by the end of December. Okay, so this is a creamy artichoke and white bean dip. So you just need one can of white beans. So you want to rinse them and drain them. And you're going to take, you only need about six and a half ounces of marinated artichoke. So this jar is actually about 15. So I'm going to just take about half. And you can add a little bit of the liquid. So these are marinated artichokes with the leaves and the bottoms. Mm -hmm. Where'd you get that, Joanne? Where did you purchase that from? This, I think I found at Smart and Final. Oh, mm -hmm. Yeah, you can get these um, ev everywhere. Just look on the aisle with the, um, the canned vegetables. So I'm just going to add. Liquid is okay? Yes. Yeah. So not the liquid from the beans, but you do add the liquid from the artichokes. A little bit. This is vinegar and oil, yeah. Oil. Yeah. Uh, this is olive oil. Yeah. Most usually they, yeah, they usually marinate olive uh, artichokes in olive oil. Okay. And then the other ingredients, you've got uh, minced uh, red bell pepper. That gives some nice color and flavor. And. Then you take about two cloves of garlic and you chop those. So I did that ahead of time. And then you need some uh, lemon juice. So I think it's about one tablespoon of lemon juice. And that's it. And then a little, you can't, the you know, salt and pepper is more to taste. So I'm going to probably just add just a little because there is salt from the beans and there's salt from the artichokes. I did, yeah. And that rinsing does remove some of the sodium, but not all of it. Removes maybe, it depends on the beans, but yeah, rinsing is always good. Okay, and that's it. Very simple and 
Let's see. So then you just put the pulses. That's it, very easy. You can make this ahead of time and let it kind of, um, let the flavors kind of marinate before your party, but that's a really easy dip. And we're gonna serve it here with um, bruschetta. So what I took was a baguette and sliced the bread really thin. And then I made a mixture with olive oil and garlic powder and a little bit of salt, and then I brush that on the bread, and then I cook it, you, you bake it in the oven at a, kind of a lower temperature, sort of low and slow, and it dries out the bread and it gets really crisp. Or you can buy that kind of bread at the store too, but I kind of like to make my own. Okay, and that's it. Mm -hmm.